说。<laughs> Opera Clubs have been observed a pleasant good evening to everyone. Charlie's recent study, Cries in the Dark. Child sexual abuse in Guyana today reveals the vulnerability of children as a direct link to sexual abuse. Likewise, Sexual abuse has a direct link to a child being vulnerable. When children are hurt, they are more prone to engage in risky behaviors with searching to escape the horrors of their lives. In 2015, a case of a 14-year-old girl who was arrested for wandering was referred to the Child Advocacy Center, operated by Charlie. After her arrest, the girl revealed that she ran away from home because she could no longer endure the forced sexual abuse in the home by her stepfather. What happens to a child who is sexually abused? Our recent study found a number of consequences. Some children experience health issues. Four of 338 children whose cases were referred to the Child Advocacy Centers from 2014 to present suffered ruptured uterus as a result of the abuse and needed to be hospitalized. Some abuse resulted in pregnancy and childbearing. Other victims contracted HIV, gonorrhea, syphilis, and other sexual transmitted infections. Some sexual abuse victims referred to the CACs reported they were unable to focus in school as a result of the abuse. Many said their school performance suffered. Several said they began getting into trouble at school. Many stopped attending school. Children who are sexually abused and receive no interventions are likely to engage in juvenile delinquent behavior such as truancy. Therefore, the stigmatized is failures, bad children, when they are really in need of support. Some victims were forced to move out of their homes to live with other family members or in an institution, most commonly if the abuser continued to live with their immediate family after the abuse. Following the disclosure, some abusers fled. If the abuser had brought income to the family home, victim families often fell deeper into poverty after the abuse, sometimes becoming homeless or being forced to live in crowded conditions with relatives. The Juvenile Justice Bill is expected to decriminalize crimes such as truancy and wandering and deal with the issue of youth sentencing. Mr. Ramchatan said, and I quote, these are all economic crimes, and these young people shouldn't be penalized for being poor and going, and going on the streets. We can see the connection here. Often, what we see and term as juvenile delinquency are sometimes simply symptoms of certain social issues, inclusive of child sexual abuse. Children are especially vulnerable to cases of repeated child sexual abuse and are also likely to be punished for ex expressing the symptoms of child sexual abuse that society may term as juvenile delinquency. The problem is so complex that we end up punishing children when we should really be helping them. The recent study showed that an abused child is at increased risk and experiencing the same form of abuse by multi multiple perpetrators. Some children who participated in the study reported being sexually abused by as many as five different perpetrators. The research revealed that children are most vulnerable in places and with people where they should be safe. 82% of children referred to the CACs indicated that the perpetrator was either a family member or a non-family member that was known and trusted either to the child or the immediate or extended family. Children's vulnerability in these cases are compounded by the fact that a child is less likely to report abuse perpetrated by people close to them. 
Further, family members are likely to protect other family members by not involving or calling the authorities. Clearly, strangers who might grab a child in a dark alley do not pose that greatest danger to the youngest children. Rather, men who they know both inside the family and outside the family are more likely to sexually abuse them. The recent study also revealed that victims of sexual abuse ex experience a number of post-traumatic symptoms such as nightmares, depressions, suicidal feelings, and suicidal attempts among others. These children are in urgent need of the trauma-focused therapy and other psychosocial interventions offered by the CAC. Yet, in 2017, only 30% of 841 cases of child sexual abuse were referred to the CACs. For 2017 alone, it is possible that close to 600 victims of child sexual abuse may never receive trauma-focused therapy to heal from the trauma and are likely to grow into adulthood, struggling to suppress their childhood trauma. However, there has been progress. Since the launching of the Sexual Offense Court in November 2017 by the Acting Chancellor and Judiciary, there has been approximately 80% successful persecution rate of child sexual abuse cases that have that have made it to the new court. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the children of Guyana are fed up and disgusted with us as adults who are in the position of trust. If we are not held accountable as professionals, then our children will continue to be vulnerable. Often, we are the only hope that children have after they were not believed by their families, and our approach to the case can either give a child hope and pave the path of justice and healing, or it can add to the destruction of that child. We need a national plan for the prevention of child sexual, sexual abuse. We need child advocacy, child advocacy centers established in each of Guyana's 10 administrative regions so that victims can have increased access to specialized counseling. We need to enhance our training, our persecutors. We need the opposition, civil society, the academia, and all our stakeholders to commit, sustain, preventative initiatives to child abuse. Above all, we need everyone to realize that children, Guyana's children, have a right to grow up in a society where they are, where they are free from abuse and have the opportunity to fulfill their full potential. Thank you.